this video basically came from this comment right here that says you guys should do a video on how many locations you have and your average monthly slash weekly profit per machine. To sum it up, an arcade business that we run is basically you get a machine, you put it on location, you pay a commission, and then you take home the remaining. And we have 12 locations currently. Now before you say how do you only have 12 within the past two years, one, we took a lot of time just learning about what this business is and figuring it out. Two, we spent a lot of time getting into the whole event side of this industry, setting up temporary arcades. We did it at our local Halloween event called Fright Nights. We absolutely love that. We're so excited to God willing do that again this year. And then we also did it at the South Florida Fairgrounds. We set up two temporary arcade booths there as well. So we've been busy doing different aspects in the business and now we're going to share with you guys how much each location makes. And I'll put a little spin to this and I'll also throw in how much the event made us because I know that, that is a super big question. To sum it up, we have two laundromat locations, one cinnamon dessert shop. Um, I think the rest are ice cream shops. We have one ice cream shop, two, three, four, five. <laughs> They're not all ice cream shops, never mind. And then we have two markets, that's 10. We have one Chinese buffet. During the time that I've been editing this video, we currently lost the Chinese buffet, but we got this other supermarket, so we'll swap that into it. What's our 12th one? I'll pop it up on the screen, I forgot. This location is no more either, so just to clear it up, we have 11 total locations. Now I'm going to be taking you guys around, showing you each of our locations, how many machines we have in there, what commission split is, and how much we profit. Now we're just going to get into this video. So the first location is this laundromat location, and we have a total of eight machines in here, and the commission split here is 30%. So one month gross income comes out to $2,166.04, but then we deduct the 30% commission split along with 10% going to product just because the main money makers in here are coin pusher and the money claw. So then it comes out to a total profit each month of $1,299.63. So taking that monthly profit, we can assume annually we will be making $15,595.56. Now moving on to our second location, another laundromat. This location is also 30% commission split, and we have five machines in here, one of them being a double mini claw, and then the sixth one being a gumball machine. In a month, total revenue comes out to $1,353.89, but then deducting product cost and the split, it comes out to $812.33 a month, which we can then assume $9,748 for a year. We then have this Great American Cookie Shop location, which is a 50% split, and we only have one machine in here, a coin pusher alongside a change machine. We actually bought this location, so we typically wouldn't do 50%, but we love the owner so much, so we're definitely keeping this location. Revenue-wise, it makes $383.78 a month on average, and then after commission split and bills added back onto the top, which averages about 10%, we are making $153.51 every month. And our our yearly profits on average come out to $1,842.12, plus a bag of the best cookies ever. Now we're moving on to another favorite location, and this is an ice cream shop, and we have one large claw machine and one mini claw machine in here, and total revenue for the month comes out to $1,062.55 a month, and then in this location we have a 20% split with about 15% going to product costs, leaving us with a total of $690.66 on average each month, which will then come out to an annual profit of $8,287.92. Now moving on to another ice cream shop, we have one mini claw machine in here, and in this ice cream shop we also pay a 20% commission split along with 15% going to product cost. So revenue wise, we make $292.23 a month, and then we take home in profit after the 20% split and 15% product cost, we then take home $189.95 a month, which yearly can come out to $2,279.40. Fun fact, this was actually our first ice cream shop location ever, and they have the best banana splits. 
We then have this cinnamon shop location with one mini claw machine in here and we now currently don't pay a commission split because they have switched owners. We're just averaging out 15% for product costs. So revenue wise, everything we pull out of the machine, we are making $153.08 a month, definitely a lot slower. After the 15% product cost deduction, we are profiting $130.12 a month, which comes out to $1,000. $561.42 for the year along with awesome cinnamon rolls. Then we have another ice cream shop location which I have not had better ice cream in my life ever than this ice cream here. All natural, made from real fruits and it tastes so yummy. But this location we have a 20% split along with about 10% going to product costs. So in revenue, we make $84.50 a month. And then after commission split and product cost, we profit $47.84 a month, around $709.80 for the year. So definitely another slower location, but we absolutely love the owner in here. He is so friendly and had this awesome sign hanging up in his ice cream shop. I don't film much in these next two supermarkets, but this first one, Bravo Supermarket, makes us $767 and 68 cents a month with a 30% commission split and 15% going to product costs leaves us with $422.22 on average a month. Then moving on to the meat market, this is also one mini claw machine with the same commission split of 30%. We make $285.35 a month. Then after the commission split and 15% going to product, we are making $156.94 a month. Lastly, our 11th location is another ice cream shop, one mini claw machine with a 20% split and then about 15% going to product. So revenue a month, we make $179.06, and then profit-wise, we make $116.39. And annually, we can assume $1,396.69. And the owner here, Mimi, is so sweet and so nice, and she has awesome ice cream, acai bowls, and a bunch of other food. So total profit from all 11 locations comes out to $48,370.21, and on average, monthly, we are making $4,030.00. 85 cents passively guys from 11 locations that's just crazy however the past two years we haven't actually profited pretty much any of this because we've been buying more product and getting more shipments and more orders and more machines and just expanding and throwing everything we make into the business to expand it even more so but now we'll move on to the event side of the business that we've been tapping into now moving on to the event side of our arcade business, we're going to first talk about Fright Night. So if you don't know, this is a temporary arcade that we set up in the October season and we built a whole arcade for the first time ever here. We had a total of 33 machines in here and the back row we lined up with all of our larger claw machines. So we had seven normal claw machines, one triple claw machine and one double claw machine along with a key master in the back and two medium claws. We then had 18 mini claw machines and one coin pusher along with a change machine and to give you guys a background fright nights lasted 11 days but it would start from 6 p.m to 10 p.m and then on the weekends it would start at like 6 p.m and go to whenever they felt like closing whether that was 10 p.m 11 p.m 12 a.m it depended on the crowds but thinking back on it i actually think they were open for 10 days because one day they had a concert there so that's a little background and then on the other hand we didn't just do a flat rate price for the space in the barn so we did a 25 percent commission split and then we also deducted out 15% going to product costs. All of the nights at Fright Nights in total revenue, we made $15,095.75. And then after all of the 25% commission split and 15% going to product, that's deducting 40% of the revenue. And that left us with a total of $9,057.45. And this event was so much fun. We learned how to build our first ever temporary arcade, which we then carried into our our second event that we did at the South Florida Fairgrounds. We got two different booths and this was our first one. We had a total of 14 machines, two coin pushers, one double, but only one side of it was working. And then the triple claw, which is three large claw machines, the key master, six mini claw machines, and then two medium claw machines. In the video, we technically had 15 machines because we had one large claw machine, but that was giving us problems throughout it and it just wasn't really working or it would off and on. And then at our second booth, we only had four large claw machines and we 
got two different booths. That way for the coming year, we would be able to know which area did better. The fair was open for 17 days from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Buildings would always close by 10 p.m. So that was the one downside of being inside versus outside. Total revenue, both booths made $12,730.25. And then we also had a 25% split with 15% going to product costs, leaving us with a total profit of $7,638.15. And to start your own little temporary arcade, but it took a lot of hours, a lot of time setting it up, at each events. Along with the South Florida Fair, the second event that we did, we were there from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. and even after because we had to collect each night to turn in um, to the office the following day. So we would stay an extra hour and a half just collecting. You know, we learned from next year that we don't have to be in here all of the time, but we also loved watching people play our arcade games and win. You know, there's kind of a downside um, to events. If you don't want to spend all of your time there and like three days prior and three days after to set up and tear down then wouldn't recommend but we absolutely love doing it it gave us something to do and it showed us a different side of the business so we'll definitely be doing it again we've just learned a lot of ways on how to do it better and maybe we'll make a whole separate video on that when we start back up again in october but until then get excited for this coming october we are so excited to be back and we are doing so many things, so many new things to our arcade and hopefully expanding outside to the Midway too. So stay tuned on our channel and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and see you guys next week. Bye guys.